Even if you've lost your eyesight, smell, feel, and taste, as long as your ears still function at least, everybody knows Daytona USA. They say mastering the game gives a bigger dopamine hit than even sugar and fatty foods can offer, but it must be experienced in its true form, a luxury that's not easy to come by. Do you know of one down the street in an arcade near you? No? You might as well just give up all dreams of ever being happy again in life. So the other options besides arcades, Daytona did release on the Saturn twice. Yes, that was allowed at one point. Imagine if when Sega didn't like Forces, they just released it again, like three years later. So one of these games runs fine, but the gameplay is completely different, and the other, the gameplay is accurate, but it runs like complete dog water. The PC version is like a mix of the two. There's the handheld tiger electric port. It's kind of 3D, it's got this tiny little light up here, and it's got the full soundtrack. This is pretty good. This one, this one's actually awesome. The Dreamcast version is actually a really good game, it's just not accurate at all to the original arcade. There was actually a very accurate, literal port of the arcade version to Xbox 360 and PS3. If you're not playing Daytona with the real force feedback wheel shifter and pedals, you're not playing Daytona. You're just pretending. And other than that, nothing. Go randomly find an old cabinet from 1994 somewhere, or go die in a hole, apparently. You know, for a lot of people, real life fishing is only a tolerable activity because they get to be outside, breathe some fresh air, hang out with some people. Take that away by making it into a video game and you essentially just have a glorified quick time event. Now people do like the Sega Bass Fishing Arcade cabinet, but that was mostly because of the motion controls. So how do you experience this game in modern society? Well, you could head over to your modern gaming PC and sit down with a nice keyboard and mouse to play a fishing game. Heh, <laughs> this is Sega Bass Fishing, not WASD first person Bass shooting. You could pretend like you're holding a rod and reel, but it's actually just a Wii remote. <laughs> I live in the real world. Nah, fam, the Dreamcast port is where it's at. Eat my finger. With this bad, nasty boy here, the Dreamcast Real Controller. A device that was actually pretty revolutionary for its time, and the game port pretty accurate to the original. What are you gonna do, buy the game and then sit down like a pansy doing this? That's not immersive. This guy's standing, and he's cool, so you should stand too. So again, another title that must be played accurately on an arcade cabinet. No, you can't just stand at home. I won't allow that. The House of the Dead. That one game in the corner of movie theaters that always just scared you as a kid was actually the pinnacle of light gun zombie titles. House of the Dead games, as creative, well-voiced, and cinematic as they are, are just first-person rail shooters, which is aight if you like the video game equivalent of going for a walk. What made this game fun to play and not just to sit there and watch was light guns. Using light guns to play games is kind of a lost art considering you would actually need one of the these old CRTVs to do it. Now sure, there are some USB PC compatible light guns that work with LCD or newer monitors that require like really cryptic hacking skills to be able to use and a Wii motion sensor bar and a little dark magic. You have to do this crazy little seance, but I'm a simple man. And man, I simply want to use an old TV. The Dreamcast coming in clutch once again with a variety of different arcade shooters ported to it and a decent arsenal of light guns to choose from. So what do all these games have in common? You said bass, you're an idiot. All classic Sega titles running on model hardware, Naomi hardware, that require the stars to align to be able to play in their true intended form. And above all else, I just, me in particular, want to play them very badly and I don't know why. So what, build three arcade cabinets for three games? One for wheel, one for guns, and one for bass? Why do that when you cannot be broke? I have derived and carefully planned the cheapest, easiest, and simplest, and easiest way to play all of these games in their true intended form through a hybrid console the way Miyamoto intended them to be played. My bumbling escapades through this project will show an approachable, easy way anyone can make a full-sized arcade machine that can run almost any consoles, controllers, or hardware that you choose to use. There are no required skill sets beyond basic wood cutting and assembly. I'll include a free, detailed 3D model of my cabinet build featuring the exact size and measurements of every single piece of wood needed, and these blueprints will support any screen you might have up to 27 inches in total width and most reasonable screen weights. I'll be tracking and showing variations in what you might spend for this project, and lastly, there are timestamps and chapters for each step of this build, so when I inevitably show me pointlessly ranting about soap scum or some random crud, you can't complain. Now here's an ad break. This video is sponsored by Ugreen. Man, you know, I might be a genius when it comes to making arcade machines, but when it comes to finding a PC with all the plugs and ports I need, I'm just a fiddlestick. No, stop, please, cut it out, I beg you. You don't need to do all this. 
Just get the Ugreen RevoDock Pro 210, a revolutionary port extension with two HDMI ports, five gigabyte USB port, three USB type A, 100 watt power delivery, RJ45 and SD card reader, all usable if you have just one USB-C port on your device. Okay, sounds great. Please, I beg you, you need to get one. Why would I beg you, it even has two ports for 4K 60 Hertz HDMI output to two monitors or 8K 30 Hertz through just one. That's amazing. I I want one. Please, I, I must convince you. I look, it's beautiful. It even, it even has 100 watt output at 1000 megabits per second ethernet port. I'm sold. Please, 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 you must do it. I beg you. I, my happiness is connected directly to your wallet through some complicated backstory. You don't need to spend so much on a PC when you can get this magical device. Oh. <laughs> wow, that guy sure was annoying. But you know he's right. Check out the RevoDoc Pro from Ugreen using the links in the description for the best of the best in port options. Also check out the RevoDoc Pro 109 and other Ugreen products to save you the hassle and the cash to get the device compatibility you need with your computer, and a huge thanks to them for sponsoring videos like these. What you will need. Firstly, the base of the project, this old CRTV here. Do you like the lens flare on my face? Pretty much any old box CRTV will work for this, so you can pick it up for 50 bucks on anywhere.com. But luckily for us budget builders out there, this bad boy was left when I moved in the place from the previous owners, making this part of the build absolutely free for everyone, even you. You have one lying around. Go find it. I hid it somewhere. The brains. This can literally be anything you want. Wake up. You're feeling a bit woozy. You can use a computer, you can use a console, you can use a phone, you can use a Raspi. So you get to decide a price for this point. But if you're like me, you're using a Dreamcast and a computer that you just had lying around for years that has a busted battery that I gotta repair. Making this part of the project absolutely free. The next step is cosmetics, 100% optional. You do not need your cabinet to say Sega on it for it to run Sega games, legally speaking. Now, if you do wanna do cosmetics and you want the cost to be a little easier on yourself, remember, the better the machine looks visually, the better the thumbnail, and it's a work write-off. So it pretty much pays for itself, and you're once again very welcome. Controls. I had most of this stuff lying around. Daytona is my spirit game, okay? I had this set already. You can get them for like 60 bucks. You can also just not get it and just use a joystick. The only thing that's actually required is this basic USB button set with joysticks. And this is the cheapest thing in this entire thing. It's cheaper than the hint. And here's a cheap hint for you. Don't forget to eat your healthy proteins and fiber. That cost me nothing to give you. I'm a generous fellow. Dreamcast accessories are a little bit expensive. If you want to make a machine that plays Super Monkey Ball, all you need is a $20 GameCube controller. If you want to make a machine just for watching movies on, the only controls you'll need are your own two eyes. The next thing you'll need, a Craftsman snowblower and wood for the cabinet. Mine will consist of a strong mounting point for my TV, a side drawer for storing the engine and charging equipment, and the main control panel. This step is literally not required. You could set a stool down and put your TV on top of it and it would suffice just fine. Plus, most people just have this wood lying around anyway. So essentially, this step is also completely free. This can be way cheaper if you just use plywood instead of MDF like I have here. I'm, it's very cold out here. Now I'm well aware that this step is completely optional. I want a platform with this chair and the wheel that we can sit here, we can move it next to the cabinet for Daytona, move it away for Sega Bass Fishing. No sitting for playing bass. Now I've had this chair lying around for a few years. Some of you may remember the old boy. Its name was George. It wasn't. Just wanted to make the, the lore feel real. We thought you were gonna make this one cheap, mate. This was free. Yeah, it's very cheap. If you want, you can sit on the floor. You can sit on a rock. You can sit on a box. You don't even have to do it to begin with. You don't even have to make a machine. That being said, this soapy water and this towel did cost 400 bucks, mm. so that kind of does offset the price a bit. Okay, here in my garage, over there I've got my brand new two by four Zinis. Every YouTuber who's been in their garage has made that joke. Pretend I didn't. I made this 3D model. This is what it's gonna be. And I'm just gonna trust me who made this, and I'm just gonna cut everything as it shows up here and put it together afterwards. Don't advise doing that. I only brought you out here so you could hear the sound of the saws I'm gonna be using. Then I cut.
cut, painted, and assembled. To assemble, just screw all the wood to the other wood in a sturdy way. General rule of thumb is to do things right, not wrong. Oh, Peter, when did you get a brand new arcade machine delivered to your house during the filming of this video? Stupids! Have you forgotten? I built this with my own two hands. Cheap, easy, fast. This might be illegal to have here. Controls. You use to play games. Not this game. You use this to play that game. These AK-47s are used as self-defense. All of those used to control this powerful V8 engine under the hood here you can open up the hood here on this maintenance shelf. This luxurious uh, Alcantara chair, which I, I knitted together myself. Every seam. TV actually fits perfect to the millimeter, which is scary. That's not a good thing. And any major maintenance that needs to be done can just be done back here. And of course my computer's emulating Model 2 hardware. Do so legally, of course, with the proper license and training. On screen now you'll see a pretty detailed tutorial of how I did this. Probably animated in Blender or some, or Maya, some, you know, big budget hardware. So consensus, overall price, work time, labor cost, taxes, all that stuff. What's the verdict here? This is what I'd ask if I were extremely boring. I'm going to play my machine. Ah. Ah. Oh. Now I feel like I'm really in a car. You okay. played 30th. Don't gotta be so loud about it. Gotta wait for the red line. Shift this baby into the next gear, like they say. Oh boy. Thank you. Lightning McQueen here. Your time has been extended. Daytona. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, driving and stuff is cool, but shooting things generally limited to mostly bad guys and maybe zombies is where things really are they get exciting in life. So one of the more mystical things about my arcade design here is that it's completely modular and you can just move this. If you want it. Shoot some zombies. Okay. Common issue with arcade machines. I forget to put the disc in. Okay, for the light guns in this screen to work, I have to literally be in pitch darkness. So I'm personally a little bit scared. And like maybe, watch, gotta watch for if I pee my pants. Ah, there's a zombie. Could anyone do this? Honestly, not the worst thing I've seen. People do die sometimes. I can't believe they've done this. I don't wanna die! Yeah, well. Holy cow, there's so many dead in this house! And frogs! It's like I always say. How could anyone shoot frogs? Ow. Oh, Wait. I have another quarter. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Yeah, zombies win. Zombies win, my eyes hurt. I would die in a zombie apocalypse. Now, hey, being a cool gunslinger is pretty much all that life has to offer. But sometimes getting an old rod and reel is even for even better than that. Welcome to Lake Paradise, select an area. Thanks, let's get to fishing. I'm holding an actual rod. Why didn't I use that for my little pretend I'm fishing charade? Don't tell anyone watching the video. It's a surface hopper is what we call this. And it attracts some of the biggest fish in the seven seas. Oh, there's a big one. Oh, come here, bud. Fish, that's what that is? Oh, that's 40 feet. Okay, an average size. Good job. That's the biggest fish I've ever seen. Well, if that couldn't have gotten any more exciting. Labor costs and summary and price breakdown. Yo. You have a complaint about how long it takes to make? Hire a big, strong, fast man to help you do it. You got a problem with skill set needed to hook up everything and make everything? Get, just get smart. And of course, the most controversial thing, you got a problem with the price? You don't need all that. You don't even need this. You could just do this, this, and this. You don't even need this. Your laptop probably has a screen. You just set one of those here. You don't even need these. Just use the keyboard and mouse. You don't even really need this. And you know, at the end of the day, you don't need absolutely any of this junk or to even have watched this video. You could just sit down and emulate pretty much any of these games on your phone. Oh, but I don't even have enough money for a phone. You know what you could do? You just straight up sit in an empty room, own absolutely nothing, 
homeless, broke, no job, don't even own any clothing, don't even own the saliva in your mouth, then you know what you can do? You can just sit there and imagine you're playing Daytona and Sega and Bass, and you can be at peace with yourself. So it's like I always say, Daytona, let's go away. And by let's, I just mean you. Get out.